Hey, happy Wednesday. Uh, it's Nicole here with Equally Creative by Nicole, and I hope that your, um, if you're in the U.S., that your Thanksgiving festivities are um, being prepared and that you are not overwhelmed. If you are, um, I'm going to hold some space for you this evening. Um, I decided not to bake my pumpkin pies just quite yet. We might have it for uh, Christmas instead of Thanksgiving. So that was one thing I took off of my plate because I am doing um, a lot of things and it was kind of nice to um, have supportive family members who are helping with other things and felt like um, homemade pumpkin pie wasn't a must have for Thanksgiving tomorrow. So we're having store-bought pumpkin pie um, for the first time in a long time on Thanksgiving. Um, I love the tradition of Thanksgiving. It was one of the, I was uh, talking to my mom this morning while we were both making cranberry sauce from scratch. And um, surprisingly, it was my mother's first time. I actually got to walk her through making cranberry sauce. So that was kind of cool. But um, I was remembering some core memories and I think it it stems from how I was raised or you know the things that we did growing up and we always got together for Thanksgiving and Easter and Christmas and all of these different things and I grew up in Connecticut for the very beginning of my life and um, so I vividly remember going to my mom's mom my grandma um, on her side, my Meme, we would go to Meme and Pepe's house and we would have Thanksgiving and there was the kids table and the adults table. And I just remember filling her tiny little apartment with happiness. Like it's definitely a core memory for me. Um, I don't remember much of that happening even later. Um, my parents, you know, separated when I was a teenager uh, we definitely had gatherings, and when I got married the first time, Thanksgiving became a really great holiday for me to have everybody over. I love cooking for other people. I love preparing things. Um, I love uh, having a reason for everybody in my house to clean something, um, if we're being honest. Uh, so, you know, having having people over and having that time where you make time for others is very special to me. Um, I tease Lynn all the time about staying with me because my very first Thanksgiving without my biological children was the ultimate hardest holiday I ever went through after being separated. Um, and now it's really awkward because my kids are grown I have four out of five are not at home. Only one, only one lonely, lonely baby left. And, um, and so Thanksgiving is kind of like one of those holidays for me where I have to have certain rituals to feel okay. And that first holiday, I didn't have any of it. I didn't bake a turkey. I didn't make any stuffing. There were not, not going to be any leftovers. Um, Lynn at the time worked at SeaWorld. She invited me to spend the day with her. I got to see the park at a really, um, a really cool time where certain things were just, um, not readily visible to everybody who just comes to SeaWorld for the day or whatever. And it was really cool, but I was really sad. There were so many times during the day where I just cried and I had no idea why. Um, it was really more about the ritual that I was losing out on at the moment, not the, the loss of anything else necessarily. My kids still loved me. I was going to see them in a day or so. It was just not my holiday to spend that actual day with them. So I realized that year, which, you know, it took many crying bouts to figure out the emotional connection to Thanksgiving for me. And it really is that, that connection to feeding others, preparing things. And it's really weird that the leftovers are kind of connected. Um, so my in-laws are bringing part of the food tomorrow and we bought a full on 
big old turkey anyway. It's in our freezer. Um, we might make it for Christmas. We might make it in between. But at some point, um, I will recreate a Thanksgiving-ish type menu for my house so that I have that little bit of a ritual. I'm also very, very, very lucky that I will have a house full of people tomorrow um, even though some of my, some of my big kids aren't going to be here and that loss is definitely felt deeply just because we can't, we can't gather. Um, I will still have friends and family here and being able to create for them is, is wonderful. I did make homemade sourdough bread, of course, and I also made, um, sourdough dinner rolls and we tested one out this evening and oh my goodness, I will never buy store-bought dinner rolls ever again. Um, and that's about it. So I'm glad that you're here. Hi, Karin. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you all what I have planned for you this evening. We are going to do three different cards and a, qu a quick little treat holder. And we are going to be using some items from the mini catalog. Now this catalog is retiring at the end of next month. So you may, um, you may want to shop our last chance sale while you can. When I checked last night, these items were all still available. So we're going to feature this berry Christmas suite or most of the suite anyway. Um, and I'm going to show you these papers very quickly. And we're also going to be using this um, snowflake, uh, sparkling snowflake tag punch, tag topper punch, whatever it's called. Yep, tag topper punch. Because, you know, we can't have any more alliteration than we possibly can when it comes to stamping up, right? All right, so that tag topper punch is amazing. Love it, love it. Um, it is actually carrying over. So this is an item that will be available um, in the future and is not going to be out of uh, uh, unorderable after December. So let me just show you some of these papers. As you can see, I've been using plenty of it, but uh, two-sided paper. So you have a front and a back. And you will get two sheets of each. Some of these I have not used all of them yet. This is one of the prettiest ones. I want to do a scrapbook spread with this one. So I have two of those sheets left. And then a spare. I have more than one set here. You do get, I think it's 12 sheets in the whole pack. So I have this with these fabulous winter animals, a winter fox and a Christmas tree. We've got a deer that wears reindeer, uh, a sweater. We've got a seal pup over here. So lots of pretty stuff here. Again, our little, our little woodland critters running around in the winter. Although I'm pretty sure some of them might be snoozing at this point. I guess our bears are snoozing. Maybe not polar bears. I don't even know about polar bears. And then I have used this. You may have seen this. This was one of my uh, swap cards back in October. And there's the back side of that is this fabulous green. Okay. So that is, I do believe most if not all of the designer series paper that comes in that kit. I'm gonna to try to stuff this back in here okay. and put it aside because I have everything ready to go. So let's go ahead and do our very first card. And I went with Warm Wishes here. This really reminded me of um, like the Swiss Alps and ski sweaters and all of that warmth and coziness. So that is why the Warm Wishes is there. And we'll go ahead and get started on this. Excuse this fabulousness. I have decided that um, sometimes it's just gonna be messy on here. 
trying to conserve some of these papers. I can't wait until our, um, our new mat comes out. It is a tempered glass. And so I'll be able to clean all this stuff off each time instead of grabbing a new piece of paper every time I get on camera because there's plenty left to this paper for me to use. All right, so I have a standard card base. I have um, five and a half by eight and a half. We have scored it at four and a quarter and it is in the portrait direction. We have a piece of Knight of Navy that is cut just a smidge smaller. So it is four and one eighth, I do believe, by five and three eighths. And then I have my four by five and a quarter, and that'll fit right on top of there. And I have my piece for the inside. And then we get to create our layers here. So we're gonna go ahead and stamp first. I am using Real Red tonight and Night of Navy. So I'm going to start with the Warm Wishes in Real Red, and it's going to go directly on here. Now this square is two by two, and it is uh, designed for the punch width because the punch is a two inch strip that we're gonna punch both sides to create that label. And I'm stamping this right in the center. Set it behind me. Then we're gonna use this snowflake and we're gonna do some second generation stamps because this is really, really dark. Our Knight of Navy is a super dark and I'll just stamp it right here for you to see how dark that shows up. So it's not terrible. I just want a little more variation. So I'm going to stamp off here once and then I'm going to come over here and stamp and I'm going to do this a few times and kind of create um, kind of like a little cluster in the corner on the top and the bottom right here, the top left and the bottom right. You can see how, how this paper gets a little messy. And then I just added a little bit of um, extra on there. There we go. And then we also have Knight of Navy, um, like a denim ribbon. Let me see what it's called. Bordered ribbon. Knight of Navy bordered ribbon. So that's going to be our two bows we're going to create with this. And I simply just pull some out and then tie it like I would a pair of shoes. And then I'll trim it from the spool if my fingers will work. I might have needed to pull more off of there. I just do it so that I can save as much of my ribbon as possible without wasting too much. Sometimes I'll have a really long tail on one side um, and it ends up being a little too much waste so I can fiddle with it if I need to conserve. Otherwise, I can trim however it works for me. So whatever you like. So that was probably a little long of a tail for me to waste, but you know. All right, so I have one bow there. We'll go ahead and do the second bow. And then my friend Jennifer taught me to put my finger inside the bow when you pull it 
so that you don't crease the edge of the bow and have to flip it back out later. And that's especially helpful if you're working with like a, a wired ribbon or something like that. Because then you really have to fluff those things back out. All right, make sure I've got it tight enough. There we go. All right, zero waste on this bow. That's always nice. Okay, so you'll need two bows. And then we've got this two inches by four and a quarter inches. So it is the width of our card, but we're going to turn it portrait style. And what we're going to do is um, punch the tag ends on both sides. So our punches have this fabulous closing feature. And you just click it open. It does recommend that you stand up and push on these and only do one layer at a time. So we're just going to do this to both sides. And there we have our label. Quick and easy clean up there. And then you just close it and it stays closed like that. All right, so we're going to put our warm wishes in the center here. We're using regular, um, you can use stamp and seal or a little bit of glue on the back there. And I just centered it as much as possible and lined up my edges. Just like that. And now we can adhere all of these layers together. So I did put my DSP on my background with a flat adhesive. So either glue or stamp and seal or plus. And it's just a, the teeny tiniest of a border there. And then I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. I like having this little extra um, dimension on this entire layer. So it does use up a few dimensionals, but you could easily just lay this layer flat. It's really just a little added zhuzhing up of your card. And then you're going to have that same very slender border with the light blue. We are going to put this one up on dimensionals. We're going to use some mini glue dots to adhere the bows. And I just centered this up and down, left and right, used my eyeballs, not perfect, doesn't matter. <clears throat> so I like to fold my mini glue dot paper back and the glue dot is on this part that's folded back. And then I just smush the knot of the bow on there and make sure that that adhesive dot is pulled up with it. Obviously it's sticking to my nails and I'm actually putting it down and covering this teeny tiny little dot in the punch so that I can still see some of that snowflake on both sides. So that is card number one front and we're going to go ahead and add this. Now I do have lots of DSP so I'm going to go back and add some 
scraps to the insides and possibly my envelopes just because I have so much of this paper and this paper is not carrying over. So that's a really great way to use up some of your um, excess scraps that you don't necessarily have lots of projects for. And of course I have put away, cause I'm using it somewhere else, my, uh, my little border piece. So let me see if I can quickly find something to put down here. There we go. I don't know if that'll look right. I'll have to open that. I didn't move that one into a fancy uh, holder yet, so that one's not going to work. But I'm just going to take a piece of this and show you. That's a nice clean, <laughs> cleaner image for you to look at. All right, so that is card number one. We will move on to card number two. All right, so card number two is a, a little bit of a fun fold here. As you can see, now your these pieces aren't going to have this. This is. This is my fix from an oops last night. So yours uh, will just open like this. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to stamp first. So you've got some scraps like this in your kit. I will move this now. We're going to use Real Red and the um, Mossy Meadow and our uh, Memento ink here. So I used the Memento ink for the bear. So we'll go ahead and do him first and get him punched out because he's pretty easy. Okay, so that's our bear. Just kind of setting things aside so hopefully I don't wear them. Wear all the ink later. All right, so then the next thing I need to do is my Christmas tree, which I'm using Mossy Meadow. Again, our DSP has all of these colors listed, so I know that these are the ones they've used and that are going to go well with the paper that I'm using. So this was the outline piece, and now I'm going to fill that in just a little bit with this inside piece. I've seen all kinds of fun uh, twists and turns on this, so um, looks really dark on that screen. It is dark, but it's not black. <laughs> um, I've seen this done where that... Uh, Christmas tree is done with um, this one here. Sorry, really distracted tonight, a little chaotic, sorry. Okay, so this one is done with um, the Versamark and then you emboss it with white powder and you can do that on a green paper and cut it out or whatever color paper you want. And then you have a snow covered tree. So there's lots of fun ways that you can um, take these stamps and turn them into fancy things or less fancy things. I'm going to use this Merry Christmas and we'll be cutting this out in just a moment. Okay, so that is all of our stamping for this card. So again, I'm using um, one of our punches. This is the punch that you can purchase as a bundle with the Very Cute stamp set. And this bear cuts out so nicely. You just line them up and squeeze. And there's our bear. Okay. 
Now the other items, we will have to do a little bit of fussy cutting. So I've got my paper snips ready to go. So I am doing just a general outline of the Christmas tree, leaving a lot of white space around the outer edge just to match all the white space on the inside here by the design of the stamp itself. Again, remember you wanna turn your paper more than you're turning your scissors. Sometimes that means you have to trim a little excess off so that your fingers work. Okay. And then when I do a sentiment, again, I just kind of do like a little, little bit of wiggling along the way. It's again, it's not a, a perfect process. Some people are amazing at this. I just need a little bit of a white background. Other than that, um, it's all good. You could make this a rectangle. However you like it. All right, so let's get this sucker put together. All right, so in your kit, you're gonna have your card base, which is a standard four and a quarter by 11. It is uh, scored at five and a half. And then you have a two inch piece that's missing off the end here. That's the piece we used to stamp our bear out of. Okay. You've got four and a quarter by four and a quarter of crushed curry and a four by four piece of DSP with the cutest bears ever. Opening presents or holding presents, whatever you want to think of that as. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to this piece here. I really like how it draws out the color from the, the stars on the tree there. Then you've got a couple of pieces that are two inches by four and a quarter. So we're going to put one of those here and then we will put one of those right here. So I'll start on the one inside. Now I'll do this piece on the outside. I am lining these up with the edges using glue so that I can kind of slide it into place best I can here. It gives me just a second to kind of tweak it into place. Okay. And now I'm going to put dimensional pieces just on, I'm going to do like two rows here, Let's see, I'll use the ones that are marked so you can see. We're going to put this piece even, so that it's even on the card, but only the left hand side is going to be covered. All right, so now I can pull these off. And then I can center this. Leaving roughly the same amount of space on either side. And then we will add our raised pieces here. So our bear is going to get dimensionals on his bottom. Our tree is going to get dimensionals straight up and down. And the reason the bear is only getting dimensionals towards his back end is because his head is covering the tree. So we don't need multiple um, layers there. And let's see. 
all of the DSP pieces are in different places. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to end up covering this one down here. Uh, and then his head is going to be on top of that tree there but his bottom is not. So this is a flat lever level here. This layer is uh, nice and flat. Now my Merry Christmas is going to go across in the same way. Yeah, I don't want to cover his head. So I'm only going to put a dimensional on this back half and I'll put a dot of glue over here. So let's see. That'll fit there, but I am going to grab a mini dimensional for that side there and a dot of glue right here. Literally just a dot will do that in between. that on there. Now because I had some extra gems left, I'm looking for them, thought I left them out. I like to clean up things right after I've used them sometimes. So it looks like I have put them away. I'm telling you I'm using the heck out of those rhinestones that I ordered. I mean, this pack is almost done and we're going to use it a couple times tonight. So I ended up putting my standard three on this one, but you'll see sometimes you need a little extra, a little extra bling. So for this one, I just did three in that corner. For this one, I put three over here. Um, it's really up to you how you want to do it. All right, let's pull this back out so you can see card number two. All right, gonna move on to card number three. Card number three is probably my favorite. It uses our very vanilla paper, which I don't use often enough, that's for sure. It gives it a very antique kind of feel, and I think that's what I like about it a lot. So here is card number three. So let's go ahead and work on that one. And we are gonna do our stamping first. Your kit will include all of your all of your fun pieces. So you're gonna have this wonderfully embossed piece of vellum. It is using the Snowflake Sky 3D. And let me show you something about this, this wonderful folder. So I don't know that you can see it, but at the top, my snowflakes are kind of spread out a bit. And towards the bottom, it is very, very dense snow down here. I don't know if you can really see that in the folder itself. But what I did was I made sure I wanted like a snow globe kind of feel for this one. And so oh, you can see it here. So up here is where it kind of gets more sparse and then it's kind of more dense towards the bottom. So I made sure I lined these up so that they were kind of like a snow globe. All right, so you're gonna have some scraps to do your stamping on, and then you're gonna have two layers. Now I did a four and a quarter by 11. I scored it five and a half here. And then I have a four by five and a quarter and a three and three quarters by five. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, do things a little backwards just to put these out of out of the way for a moment. 
So DSP directly onto my mossy meadow color here. And then I'm going to add this layer is going to be flat. Remember, you could put this up on dimensionals if you want. You can, I don't know if you can even tell how little glue there really is on here. It's not thick. It doesn't stick up very far. This glue goes a long way. If you could only purchase one adhesive, I would start with the glue. And then I would use it so sparingly, but everywhere on your card bases. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So this we're going to add here and I'm going to go ahead and use some glue and I'm just putting a little bit where I'm pretty sure that Christmas tree is going to be able to hide it or the bears, either one. I might have turned that the wrong way. So I'm just putting that on here and letting that set up while we do the stamping. All right, so that is out of the way. Now both of my bears will actually fit on this piece here. So let me go ahead and get my bear back out. And I'm using the uh, Memento Black and the mossy meadow green again. And it doesn't matter which one of these you do first. We're just gonna put one closer to the left side and the other one will be closer to the right side. So you'll be able to cut these out. One will be punched, the other will be cut out. Christmas trees back over here. Now I did not clean any of my stamps yet because we're using um, the same colors for each of these stamps, which really helps in the grand scheme of things. And I'll just clean those all at once in a little while. Now I did do a second generation stamp for this one. So I stamped off on my scrap paper here, and then I stamped that second generation on there. <coughs> All right, that there. So now I'm gonna punch the bear out. That. And then I will fussy cut out these other two elements. I think my favorite aspect of Stampin' Up! products is that I can really use just a few tools to create something that is just so elegant looking and so beautiful. And I love snow globes, so when I saw the deckled circles this year, I was like, oh, those would make great little snow globes. And other people have done so much with them as snow globes. And I was like, okay, how can I incorporate the snow globe look? That's how we got here. So I'm a left-hander who has to use her right hand to cut because left-handed cutting just doesn't work very well for me. And I wonder if that's why I always have to chop all this paper off. It's always in my way. Okay, so now we are ready to put the rest of this together. Now I can see it's lifted up just a tiny bit 
I'm actually going to put a speck of glue right on one of the embossed pieces and just push it down. That way my glue is kind of hidden by that embossed piece of snow. All right, so again, our bears are going to be raised on dimensionals as well as our Christmas tree or our winter tree, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go ahead and put my tree on first before I put any dimensionals on my bears because they do overlap a little bit because they are inside my snow globe. And I am moving the tree to the right hand side this time because that's where I had stuck that glue earlier. So my bears will be walking away from my tree. Let's see. Maybe he'll follow. Yeah, we'll do it like that. All right, so he's going to get one dimensional at the bottom. And he's going to be back here towards the edge of that snow globe area. And then this one will definitely get a dimensional over here towards his head. And I'm going to put a second one right here just to make sure he's supported. And then I'm going to put a little tiny dot of glue on his bum. And we're going to slide him ever so carefully under the baby or slide her under the baby because it's most likely a mama bear. And we're going to go ahead and add we're going to do five of these because it's just so awesome. All right, so take a pick tool, lifesaver. So I did three towards the top on the last one. And then I added just two little ones towards the bottom. I actually used our uh, sequins trios for the original. So let me pull my little backdrop back out here. All right, so here are my little clear white sequins. And then here is the rhinestones. So one is a little flashier. This one was like snow for me. So it's extremely subtle. Okay. All right, so that was card number three. All right, now we get to create a little treat holder to match card number three. And yes, this will be in the kit. Um, you'll have to come up with your own treat. You'll see what you'll have to find. I think it might be pretty easy for you to find this, though. All right, so here is what we're going to recreate, okay? This was inspired by Patricia Dominici. And um, I will be at an event this uh, weekend. So I decided I needed to create some fun little extras, some little stocking stuffers, or you need a class gift, come buy 20 of these and walk out the door, right? They're ready for you. So this is what we're gonna recreate. And I did this one to match this. So yours is also going to coordinate. I didn't have enough of this paper. So unfortunately, I did have to use one of the, um, one of these as a matter of fact. So let's take a look at what our kit looks like. It's super simple. Okay. Everything is pre-cut and ready to go. You're gonna have two concentric cir circles cut You've got a little scrap piece here and your background piece here. You have pre-scored background piece here, okay? So this is, let's see if you can see this, in case you wanna snap a picture or whatever, okay? 
So this is two and a half by eight and a half. I used a full size candy cane. It's a, it's from this pack here that they sell at one of those big giant box stores that I typically despise running into, but I had to be in there. Got a few. <clears throat> so we're going to take this and we're going to glue it down. I did like to leave a bit of a frame. You could use either side. It actually doesn't matter. Again. All right, so I'm going to put this and I like to line it up at the top first. And just kind of wiggle that into place so that you have for the most part, an even outlined border all the way around there. Okay. Then you're going to fold this up and you're going to add this one, whichever, whichever way you want. It looks like my arrows are pointing this way, so I'll stick with the same direction. So be cautious if you're using a directional paper, otherwise it's not really going to matter. And I centered this again, leaving a border uh, at the top of that um, score line here. You can see I have one, two score lines right here. So that's what that looks like. I used, I used a tis the season, but we're gonna use warm wishes here. And I'm going to clean this one because I would like to use the green. And I am using a baby wipe on this for the moment. I'm actually surprised I'm not wearing more red on my body. All right, so we're going to use our Mossy Meadow and we're going to stamp this right in the center of this circle. And we will layer this on here. I did not use any um, dimension for this part, but I will add both of these up here with dimensionals. Now you can use whichever coordinating ribbon works for you. I pulled out, I pulled out this gold satin edged ribbon because I really liked um, that cream background that it gives. So I'm going to go ahead and move this little pin to this one so I don't end up stepping in it. And I need a candy cane to measure. Now I used a regular old hole punch for this. Basically I needed to measure my candy cane. So I needed to kind of figure out where I was going to punch holes in here. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use some of the um, design just to kind of give myself a spot to mark. So I'm using this little divot here. And then I pushed this all the way in as far as I could and just gave it a second, second little hole can see that. Okay, so now my candy cane will be tied in here. Okay, so I'm going to pull some ribbon off of here and I think it's about 18 inches. And then you're going to thread this from the back to the front for both holes.
if you're hanging this like an ornament or a tag, you would want to punch that part now. now I'm gonna go ahead and do that for this one. This is our very best trio, and it's got two different corners plus this fabulous uh, little ribbon tag punch. So, uh, so we'll use that in a moment, but we'll go ahead and get our candy cane tied on here. Again, this bow can be long, short, happy, sad, however you want this to look. And I'm actually going to, I was gonna say I was gonna fiddle with it, but I'm gonna trim both of those tails. And I'm using a glue dot and I'm going to put the bottom of my candy cane onto that glue dot. And it is not sticking, what on earth? Right, let's see. I don't know if that's gonna work or not work, but I think it's gonna work. And then we're gonna put a glue dot on the top of the candy cane. And you know, if the glue dot doesn't work and you happen to have any Seal Plus, you can put a tiny bit of Seal Plus on this inside flap right here. That is going to hold this candy cane in place a little bit more. Oh, this bow is a little little wonky, but okay, there we go. And then we're going to add this. We're going to put it up just a little bit. So I'm going to put two dimensionals on the bottom here. so that we can have a little bit of that peeking out. So this is the basics and then I'm going to add a little bit of my ribbon for a little hanging ornament piece. You could hang this on a tree or again leave the top piece off. It's just extra ribbon that's going to get tossed, right? So um, it's really how much you would want to do. I would love to know if you would hang this on the tree or if you would just hand it out without a hanging ribbon. That would be a fun thing for y'all to tell me. All right. And if you're watching the replay, because I know you're busy. All right. So here is project number four, which is our Sweet treat holder. Oh, look at that. We are popping off today. Okay. And that's that. Make sure I push on that well enough. All right. Let me switch this over. I am grateful, grateful, grateful to have you in my lives. My lives. I'm grateful to have you in my life in whatever form that takes. Um, thanks for giving me some grace. I'm still getting over the crud. And obviously, I don't talk well when I'm on live videos. <laughs> uh, and that's about it. So I hope you all have a happy, happy Thanksgiving. And if you're local and you want to come stop by and say hi at Curette Farms on Saturday morning, that would be wonderful. If you're on my mailing list, I have a special Black Friday deal coming out for you. Um, Stampin' Up! obviously will have something. I have no idea what that is yet. And um, other than that, have a fabulous turkey day tomorrow. Bye!